I've been doing leak code consistently for over two years now. At this point, I've done hundreds of problems over a variety of different sessions. I've done tons of random problems from the discussion forum, and most importantly, creating educational content for this YouTube channel. This channel has kept me motivated and consistent with my studying habits, even when I wasn't actually looking for a job. So over these past two years, here is what I've learned. First thing I've learned is the more problems you solve does not necessarily equate to more skill. Having done Leak Code for such a long time now, I've seen hundreds of new problems being added to the platform over time. And when you see more and more problems being added, it may feel like your study prep will never end. But the truth is you can be interview ready by doing 75 to 100 very carefully chosen problems. So for example, if you're doing five problems a day, but each problem is very closely similar, you aren't really improving your skills more than just stat padding your leak code metrics. If you only need a maximum of 100 questions to be interview ready, then why are more problems added to the leak code platform? Well, to answer this, it's pretty simple. It's because they're a subscription business and they need to keep up the image that you need to keep solving problems. So just to prove my point, here is leak code question 316. And if you actually look in the description, it even says this is an exact duplicate of leak code problem 1081. The only difference is leak code problem 1081 came on the platform many months later but they're exactly the same problem. The problems are just worded very slightly differently, but you can see that if I were to solve 316 and then solve 1081, I really didn't learn anything extra. I just got another problem under my leak code metrics that I solved. Another example is leak code problem 530. This is an exact duplicate of leak code problem 783. And once again, if you were to solve 530, and then go ahead and solve 783, you're not really learning anything new when you solve that second problem. Just one more example to drive the point home. You have leak code problem 159, which is longest substring with at most two distinct characters. This is a very popular problem. Now, this one doesn't explicitly say that there is a duplicate problem, but the solution is almost identical with leak code problem 904, fruit into baskets. The code differences between the two are so small, but the approach is exactly the same. So the key takeaway that I've learned is choose your problems very carefully when you're studying because leak code is not going to do it for you. The second thing I learned is that consistency is a lot better than grinding. Like I mentioned, this channel somewhat forced me to be consistent with my practice. I had to learn new problems each week, specifically problems asked recently by large tech companies. And if you fast forward to the past three months, I ended up interviewing at some large tech companies like Google, Salesforce, Coinbase, Twitter, and some others. And I ended up getting four different offers. I really attribute the interview successes to having good habits and improving my data structures and algorithm knowledge over a long period of time instead of a short period of time. I, I wasn't grinding, I wasn't doing you know eight hours of studying every day because when you cram a bunch of different concepts into your head at once, it's very easy to forget what you studied even just a week later. In reality, I was doing about five hours a week. I noticed that since I wasn't grinding, I was retaining the information really well and I didn't have to go re-review old concepts. So if you're not even planning to interview anytime soon, I still highly, highly recommend doing only a couple problems a week. And when you do have your interviews coming up, you'll feel a lot less stressed. The third thing I've learned is that explaining a problem or a concept out loud will help you retain the information a lot better. This became really apparent to me every time I was writing a script for these specific YouTube videos, whenever I learned a new problem or topic, if I made a video about it, the information was just stuck in my head from then on. I have algorithm tutorials that I've done on this channel many, many months ago, and I haven't revisited those concepts in a long time, but I still remember them because I you know, wrote out a script, I explained it out loud, you know, talking to the camera, and this was always really, really helpful. The action of writing out the algorithm, going over specific examples, and then explaining out loud the code, the time complexity, the space complexity, 
it was all beneficial for retaining the information. Another example of this was when I first learned Khan's algorithm for the first time, and this was many, many months ago. And although I didn't make a video on this topic, I ended up explaining it to a friend who was about to do his onsite at Meta. And after I explained the algorithm out loud to him, it just made the algorithm click even more for me. And I still remember all of the use cases and implementation of this algorithm, even though it was many, many months ago. The last thing I learned is that you should always time yourself. Putting a time box and how long you take on a problem is really important because this mimics what the actual interview will be like. Any problem I do on LeetCode or any other platform, I always set a time limit for myself. Having a very strict time limit not only saves you time, but it mimics what the interview will be like. So if you don't practice with a time limit, an actual interview is going to feel awful because in the back of your head, you know you're on a on very limited time. If you're spending more than 45 minutes on a problem, it's best to just read the solution because at that point, the interview is likely over. And if you do need help, the discussion forums and YouTube are, in my opinion, the best places to look. Use the discussion forums if you're more of a textual-based learner and then use YouTube if you're more of a visual-based learner. I'm more of a visual-based learner, so uh, occasionally I will go to YouTube to see if you know anyone has posted about a specific algorithm. Um, however, the discussion forums are fantastic. Um, there's a lot of smart people, so definitely use that. Honestly, studying consistently is really hard. Like I definitely relate to that. But one thing that makes it easier is studying with a group. If you're looking for people to study with, come check out the free Discord channel that I have. I've noticed that the group has grown immensely in the past couple months, so it'd be cool to try to get more members. The link for that will be in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this video. It really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.